Hey, welcome to the live chess instructions of the Backyard Professor. Um, I was supposed to be on this morning at 10 o'clock. I even told people last night that I was going to be here. I had all kinds of plumbing issues today in the house. I also forgot that I had an appointment with my hearing aids. Yes, I'm to that point where I need hearing aids, and I've got them, and oh, wow, the world is vastly different now, <clears throat> without question. So, <clears throat> I have had a screaming Saturday <laughs> that I did not expect at all. Hey, Melissa's mind, how are you? Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, we are going to do some more... Queen Gambit declined ideas in this opening. Um, I kind of like this because my nephew, who I taught chess to, uh, we helped him learn chess years ago. And within six months, he was trouncing all of us. And so that kind of gave us the impetus to get better and get better. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, wonderful. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to all you new subscribers also. I'm getting quite a few new subscribers. And men, women, children, everybody's welcome at the BYP's live session for sure. But my nephew likes Queen Gambit Decline, so hopefully he'll find this instructive as well. Um, hang on, let me, looks like I need to adjust this board just a little. There we go, that's a little better. I mean, if you're going to play chess, you got to show the whole chess board, not just part of it, so... Hey, it looks like Chris Gordon. Yes, another Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yeah, hey, you remember the old Saturday Night Live, the hippy-dippy weatherman? He'd get on there and he'd go, I am the hippy-dippy weatherman, and we're going to give you the hippy-dippy weather, and today... It's going to be hippy dippy weather, man. And today is hippy dippy weather for us. It's blowing, it's snowing, it's raining, a terrific mix. So, anyway, hey, John Harrison, hi, how are you? Jews are name, how are you, my good friend? Good to see you. I'm, I'm starting way late on a Saturday night. I had a lot of plumbing issues, hearing aid issues. Anyway, let's get on this. Um, Queen Gambit declined. There's, there's so many ways to go wrong for either side. And that's what's so fun is uh, in this particular text, he really shows uh, a lot of different ideas for both sides. Let's get started. This is the old book of Irving Chernev, Winning Chess Traps. So it's in the old nomenclature. I will try hard not to cornfuse you, but here we go. If I do cornfuse you, I apologize. It's not my fault. <laughs> it's the book, the book, blame the book. So here we go. Typical Queen Gambit declined. He didn't take the Gambit pawn. He instead put the King three. That's why it's called the Queen Gambit declined. Now, my wife said, now that I'm wearing my hearing aids, I'm talking a little softer, so please tell me if you can hear me. I don't mean to talk too soft, but it's really, really loud now in my head. I didn't realize how deep I had gotten until I put these things on. You can't even see them, do you? I look just as funny, odd, and weird as I used to, right? Look at this. I can show you the back of my head, and you still can't see them. Woohoo! Invisible, you know. My grandpa had a hearing aid that was about that cotton picking big. It was larger than his ear that he stuck behind his ear back in the 1960s, you know. We've come a long way, baby. Okay, anyway, get back to the chess already. Knight to Queen Bishop 3. Queen Gambit declined. They are going to bring out their pieces, which is what they should do. Knight Bishop 3. Now the... Rather than come to here, which is the natural square, he's going to put the knight at the d7. And this will make an interesting argument in the center and on the wings, interestingly enough. Going to see the pin to the queen. 
and he's not going to bother with that. He's got this wonderful black triangle, the downside of this sort of Frenchish opening problem is the light squared bishop. Again, it's blocked in. It will have a hard time. If it does get to see play in action, it will be later in the game. Yeah. So if you are participating, playing as white in the queen gambit declined, recognize when your opponent does start doing this particular pawn shape, you can speedily develop and somehow find a way to attack because he will realistically be playing with less pieces for the opening. If you can get an advantage, man, now is the time. You must think fast. You must think attack, etc. Right? That's the way to do this. Ken Brown, good to see you. Yeah, yeah, my hearing aids feel like my earbuds in a way, except they don't play rock and roll music. I'm going to have to figure that out. <laughs> Maybe I have to hum the songs to myself. Ugh. Let's not do that. I can't even hum on key, let alone sing on key, right? So, and now we have the uh, strengthening the center committee, and now the queen to rook four. And we do see this in the queen gambit. It is a way for black to... I, I mean, I'm going to say it this way. I doubt it's this way, but from I played through enough of these that maybe this is Black's idea on how to compensate for the inability to get his light squared bishop out. I'm just throwing that out as a speculation because it is an early queen development. And you kind of go, well, I know, I get it. All the rules are meant to be either bent or broken, etc. But th this is, you know, it seems extreme. But look, on the other hand, the light squares just aren't going to work for black. And so why not play on the dark squares? So in a way, that makes sense, right? Even though it does mean the queen comes out early. Hey, skate away the day. Oh, yes. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here live, too. Yeah, those Silman imbalances, I am intending someday this year to redo that whole series with some extra materials as well, because I've learned a lot since I've gone through Silman. But I do want to get through Silman, but my... Dear and good friend, Juzer name, who is here live. Hi, Juzer. Juzer, baby! Yeah. Uh, he has given me some advice, as have several other people who say, uh, dude, you've studied enough strategy where you are having difficulty is with tactics, and I have been taking their advice. This year, I'm going to emphasize my tactics understanding. And so it's going to hopefully help me develop my chess insight and sight better. So, but yeah, yeah, it's all good. Those Selman videos were when I was young and energetic and determined. Now I'm an old fart, energetic and determined. <laughs> and I wear X-Men t-shirts. Right, come on. It doesn't get better than that, does it? Okay, back to reality, back to reality. So we've got the queen to rook four here. At this point, white goes ahead and pulls the trigger in the center. Now, it's interesting because now, for the most part, he's got most of his uh, minor pieces developed, the, both knights and the bishop. Uh, Smirnoff, Grandmaster Smirnoff, um, says if you open the center, you need to make sure that your pieces are active. Don't don't really don't try to open the center too early, or you can get in serious trouble because you're just not prepared. Perhaps seeing the queen come out as a developing move encourages White to uh, release the tension here, which White does. And it's true, he does, He has an okay development. They're, they're not fully developed. But uh, yeah, we'll see how this works. This gives the chance for the knight to take the pawn because, of course, the queen has developed. And that 
very well could be one of the other incentives for the queen to develop early over to the a5 is get out of the pin and then it's not that critical and you can bring your knight into the center and in fact powerfully so by taking that center pawn so this is working out pretty good so far for both sides and the white queen will also come out now queen knight three and now this is the signal and of course you're going to see this again, not to keep repeating and reiterating, but it's really important to see the, uh, to, to get the repetition so that uh, I love uh, Master, um, National Master Robert Ramirez in his videos. He just repeats and repeats and then he extends it a little farther. Then he repeats and repeats and, and it's a great way to learn. So once again, seeing the queen seeing the bishop using the dark squares because the light squared bishop is just not going to play a role in this game and the not until later hopefully black can get that bishop out later because he has another rook here that's not going to be able to do a whole lot either and with the queen on the file the rook's not going to be able to come over the file either. So there's a potential huge downside to this if Black does not pay attention to development. It's not a bad opening, but depends on how you play it, right? And we always have to keep watching. Hey, Spencer, good to see you. A tickled Bishop decline. It could be. <laughs> we could make it a tickled Bishop decline. And uh, Abogado. Oh, Peru Cusco. Welcome, my friend. Long distance traveling to get here. Woohoo. Hey, IT Brennan, my man. It's all good. I'm late, too. I was supposed to be here this morning at 10, but uh, we're just going through a few of the uh, Queen Gambit decline games, some of the ideas and issues. And uh, so. Bishop knight five, and this makes sense. So now white right now goes ahead and bumps the rook to the B. And that's kind of interesting. So, of course, now it's interesting that white has opened with such that he could have castled queenside, but he sees that he needs to keep some oomph on the queenside, and perhaps he'll castle kingside after all. Neither one is castled yet. We're on move nine. It's not a crisis, but we are on move nine. So rook b1. And now the pawn pushes. This is uh, this is considered an inaccuracy, is how the uh, chess engines call it. I haven't put this through chess analysis. I'm just seeing an exclamation and a question mark on this move. It, does that mean inaccuracy or is it the question mark exclamation point that means inaccuracy? The point is, it, it might be an interesting move. However, again, uh, you know, if he was better developed, it might help to open the center. But white is looking pretty good right now with development and control of the center. Black's got pretty good control of the center, too. So maybe that means interesting. One of you can tell me if you look it up. Uh, and now the uh, the knight will take the pawn. It's an interesting idea. He puts the knight on a fantastic central outpost. It's not permanent, but really, truly, e5 is always a good outpost uh, if you're playing white. That's just how that works. And the queen knight will take the knight. And... Now, the pawn will take the knight in the center. So he still has, he's got doubled pawns in the center, but uh, basically they're really good targets. Notice, finally, ah, now see, Black's doing this right. He's got the bishop out, and he's blockading the pawn in the center. That's not bad, not bad. Let's keep watching. <clears throat> Let's ask the bishop, what is the issue? And the bishop says, okay, let's take the uh, knight, put the king in check. And the pawn will respond. 
retaking, and now Blackwell Castle. So Black is fully developed. So this is a good thing for him. Bishop, Queen, Bishop, Four, White is coming up, or Bishop to C4. For those of you who love the algebraic, like myself, Bishop C4, and again, preparing himself to castle, he realizes this, this is getting sticky. And truly, before the main battle begins in a game of chess, you truly want a castle. Nobody, very seldom do you ever want to play through a game where you don't castle. I get it. There are exceptions. 99% of the time, truly. And there's actually, and it's details. And, and we learn this through experience, of course. There are specific cases, specific situations, even some openings where you truly do want to try to castle long instead of short. But the point is get castled. And so I do believe that's what we see White getting ready to do. And... Black is now saying, what are you going to do? And the bishop comes to look for. And there's a question mark here. Hold on. Let me take the glasses off. I can't hear and I can't see. I mean, yeah, I can talk 90 miles an hour. At least that's one out of three. I'm at 33% tonight, you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, the note. The note is saying the bishop f 5 should be played. Moving forward, hitting the rook, more centralization, more ability to bring together the uh, rooks into this, etc. Instead, he's going to try to chase the. Oh no, 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 no! But sorry, Bishop. Anyway, no, he's saying he's saying, come to here. Sorry, that's white. I'm reading the instruction for black. Sorry. Yeah, he's saying come to here instead of to here. And here's why. Because now the knight will take the king pawn. So a tactic is coming up. Here we go with the tactics. Yowza. Let me double check. Yes. Oh, you know what? That does look odd, Juzer. Yeah, the rook goes to C1. See, it says rook B1, and I took that as the algebraic, and it's supposed to be rook bishop 1. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that did. All right. All right. There we go. Boy, I'm blowing it again. Isn't that so typical? I do this every cotton picking time I play. No wonder I can't improve my rating very fast. Okay, yeah, the, the rook does belong to C1. <laughs> that is the algebraic. So thanks for the correction. I appreciate it. Hey, Marcus Maxwell, good to see you, my friend. So the bishop does come to rook four, and the knight does take the king pawn, and the pawn will take the knight, and let's see what that does. That changes the structure, and it gives the queen a chance to come over to here, hitting the weak pawn, putting the king in check. So the attack is on. It also puts pressure on the bishop. And so the king can't castle that way. So right now, if you're going to castle, you probably should. And he's not going to. Instead, his bishop does take the bishop. He will take the bishop, and queen takes the king pawn check. Here we go, and the king is going to come to queen one. So see the disadvantage of not castling. The king is wide open. Queen, queen six check, and king to king one. They seem to be doing a little dance back and forth, but wait. Now she can move up to here and look at the tactic. Fantastic. Hit the king check. Hit the bishop. So king comes to queen two. And of course, queen rook first. 
keeping the pressure on. Remember, in tactics, you want the checks, the captures, and the threats. The huge advantage here is the rook gets brought into the play. The rooks are connected. And he grabs the open file with a tremendous tempo now. So now it's in tr he's in trouble because the bishop will take the rook. And now the rook will take the bishop check. And black wins this game easily is how he ends it. So let's explore this. Let's take a look at this. The king is in check. He can't come to c2. And he can't go anywhere on the e-file. So that means he's going to have to block the check because the king can't move. The d-file's owned. The e-file's owned. The c Diagonal, the C2B1 diagonal is owned. So that means he's got to put something on this aisle. Now he could do it with the bishop or he could do it with the queen. There are no other pieces that I can see that he can do it. So assuming a lesser evil, what if he did the, the bishop? You can see it. Leave the queen there. Keep that king. Take it with the, take it with the rook. Check. Now, that does give the white an option to get rid of the rook, but that also, now you want to keep it in check at this point, so don't retake with the pawn, or would you? I'm curious, Juzer, what do you think? Would you retake it with the pawn or with the queen? The queen will put the king in check, right? I'm just thinking the checks, captures, and threats, and you want to keep the initiative because you're way down pieces. So how does he say black wins this easily? Did I miss something? <laughs> Queen. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's you want to keep it with the queen. Anyway. Yeah. He's got two rooks against a queen. Yeah. And his pawns. I'm not going to play all the way through this, but his pawns on this side are just are better. He's got the majority. He can promote. That's a cert, that's obviously just a target. And he has the pawn majority here. Yeah, he, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. He's up a pawn. Um, I have seen games where the queen plays against three minor pieces, either two bishops and a knight, or I've seen a, a bishop, a knight, and a rook, and that's considered roughly even, but a queen against two rooks, black should be able to convert this. So very interesting, very interesting material and ideas here. Yeah, the pawns are weak. The queen is better than the rooks here. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Good. I'm finally starting to think just a little bit like Juzer baby. Woohoo! See, you are learning me proper, my brother. Okay, so that is a really good uh Queen's Gambit declined. Let's go to the next one. Let me reset this board up. Oh, and we'll see another one with, uh, with favor to black. I like it when that happens. It's fun to see when it goes back and forth, actually. But we shall see how black proceeds. And queen's on a right color. Queen's on a right color. I have been known to mess that up at the beginning. Do you guys, you guys remember that one video I played? I was like three-fourths the way through the, the silly game, and I'd been pontificating and elaborating on all kinds of stuff. And then it dawned on me when the queen went to move, I looked and I go, oh, wait, I've got the king and queen on the wrong squares. So I switched them real quick. I got some good comments on that one. <laughs> there was a lot of people who said, dude, you are hilarious. That's fantastic, but yeah. Okay, then. Fine, fine. Okay. Let's uh, just about ready to start this second one. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at... Hold on, let me get a drink. Wet me a little whistle, and now we can get on. Okay, let's get on with it. Here we go. Looks like we're doing good. Okay, Pond Queen. Four, pawn, queen, four. 
here comes the gambit here comes the decline here comes the knight here comes the knight here comes the bishop here comes the queen knight here comes the pawn to support the center. We've seen all of this before. Here's a, something a little bit different. This is another one of the options. Bishop King 2, just hurry up and get rid of the castle quick. White will go ahead and respond by putting the knight on his natural square, and black does choose the castle. So the castling is done for black real quick, real, real easy, real clean. And the queen, C2, hitting that H7. Very interesting. Strength in the center. Again, we see this uh, black triangle of pawns telling us that uh, bishop pawn or that, that uh, light squared bishop you must deliberately try to play so that you can get him into the game. And now pawn queen knight three. What's up with that? Uh, that weakens the knight. Now, see, this is a good lesson for me because I push way too many pawns myself. Uh, and people have said so. They said, look, dude, you did good in that game until you push this pawn, you moron. <laughs> if you can, rather than push pawns, push pieces. So that weakens the knight. And now here we go. Queen instantly. Now that changes the character of the queen move to the, uh, to the A5. Because the pawn is no longer here. Now, that's actually a really good threat because, of course, you've got the bishop to potentially come in. So let's see what happens here. He's going to bring the bishop to the d3. And here we go. Yes, immediately. Now, this is, this is big. So, knight. Oh, hold on. Bishop knight five, queen rook, bishop one. I got that one right this time, Jeezer. <laughs> C. Yeah, it's got a capital B, so that means bishop one. See, there's the old nomenclature right there, right below my finger right there. Queen rook B1, but that means queen rook to bishop one. It's not like the algebraic. That's what I messed up that last game. No big deal. Knight King Five. So Knight King Five carry. So immediately coming to the center. And it makes perfect sense because man, now that you've weakened that knight, notice how black is capitalizing on that. You bump that pawn uh, for whatever reason, because it, technically speaking, black's not gonna take. Uh, a side pawn like that. Yeah. I mean, he's going to leave the tension, but there's not a lot, unless you really have a good reason to, other than just exchanging for exchanging purposes, you're not going to take the C pawn. So it was silly to move that up to defend the C pawn and create such a weakness. Notice how black blip puts the queen out. Blip puts the bishop out and now brings in the knight all three of them hitting that knight and there's only two defenders but three attackers uh oh that means black's got tactics here now this is going to be exquisitely interesting what we see bishop will take the knight yeah the bishop has no choice. You have to take the knight. So one way of helping you defend is to take an attacker. So now at this point, he's made it so that there's still only just two pieces hitting and two pieces protecting. So that's the strategy, and the pawn will retake. But he is also hitting this other knight. And so this knight will come up to e5. To avoid being taken by the pawn. And now. Did I mess something up? Holy cats, I did again. There's no way. I did two moves. Gosh dang it. 
queen rook to bishop one, knight to king five, bishop took the knight, pawn took the bishop, knight to king five, that's king five, and it says move knight to knight three. You're saying knight d6 was on d7. Was it? Why did I put it on? Why did I put it on d6? I was trying to show something and put it on the wrong one. It was on d7. That's the queen knight. Okay, so all right, thank you. Boy, keep me straight. Now it says knight knight three. Now that makes sense. Okay, good. All right, knight knight three. And now the bishop comes to rook four. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't mess that one up. That, that is it. And now he bumps again the F pawn to hit the central pawn. And the knight will come over to knight four. And then blam. He wins the knight. He trapped the knight. So the misplaced pieces is what get get you in trouble as well. So you got to be careful that way. I think the best thing you can do at this point is at least get something for the knight so that you would take the F pawn, the F6. And it might help break open the king anyway, even though a lot of your forces over here, it looks like a lot of queens I play, but uh, yeah. So he wins a piece on that one. So that's fun to see. Is there any here where, oh, yes, okay. Now this next one shows white getting the upper hand. Let's see what black does that's so wrong so that white gets the upper hand. This will be fun to see. I don't know how I got that knight on that uh, d6 instead of d7. I've got to watch where I replace my pieces. That's the downside of doing it on this board. Sometimes I mess up, and it messes me up really, really bad. You ought to see sometimes when I'm trying to record recordings, sometimes I have to record recordings three and four times to get it right. <laughs> but you know what they say. You will, make, you will make every mistake there is to make in chess before you get where you can play good. So I'm even making them on my live with the uh, looking through good good games. Okay, let's uh, – hold on. Let me pick up my book. I just dropped half my book, and it came apart. So uh, let's take another one here. See what happens. It's going to be declined. Knight, queen, bishop, knight, king, bishop, bishop, knight, five. You're going to see that quite often, that uh, developing move. And he's going to bolster the knight by putting the knight on the d7 instead of its natural square, which there's no defect to that. It's all good. Bishop, king, two again. Knight to bishop, three. So he's, he's getting his... Uh, Minor pieces out really good. Pawn queen knight three. Now this is this is one of the different ones. This is one difference that we've seen from the other previous ones. Perhaps it's the fiend kettled bishop that's going to get black in trouble here. We'll see what happens. He goes ahead and pulls the trigger on taking the knight, and E will take the D, and then the bishop again comes to. Knight five here, pinning the knight to the king. So this is kind of interesting. Now he's broke the pin here on this side, but now he's going to pin the king. So kind of interesting. He does fee and kettle, which is what we suspected. Once you bump one of those pawns, you've got a fee and kettle. And so you're going to put pressure on the knight is the pinned piece. I mean, that's basic with the with the pin on the with the tactics. You pin a piece and then you try like crazy to attack it. And it doesn't matter what you attack it with. 
pawns, rooks, knights, queens, whatever. You can even attack pin pieces with the king. Any pin piece you want to attack, that's what we're seeing here. That's why this move makes perfect sense. Okay, and now he breaks the pin. He can still castle. Okay, let's get out of dodge. Woohoo! So there you go. And now a really interesting bishop rook six. So he's tucking the king away, and white is saying, okay, I do have my four minor pieces. I'm going to go ahead and sack one and open up the king. I might even sack two of them, but I'm going to attack because I am well enough developed. Notice, now, the black is also equally developed. The difference is the white minor pieces are more active. That is, they are they are on stronger squares hitting black in his own territory, is how uh, Grandmaster Smirnoff would say it. He's attacking in your opponent's territory. So, therefore, the white pieces are more active, and perhaps that's why he feels justified in attempting this. Okay, let's see what happens. That's really kind of cool and interesting. And now I've done something else wrong. There is no way. Sorry, I lied. Bishop knight five, queen knight queen two. Man, I'm going to quit doing lives. Bishop knight five, bishop knight two. Knight king five, castles. Bishop. Bishop. Six. This one. That one. Man, it's tough coming from algebraic notation to the old notation. I can't believe how tough it is. There's what he did. He's attacking the knight and the bishop. And then the bishop will take the bishop. And then the knight will take the bishop, hitting the queen. And the queen comes to king one. So while he's still in attack, while he's still in his territory, take the bishop and go check. Now, this is interesting because when the queen takes the knight, the crazy thing is, is putting the queen directly across from the king. Yeah, the pawn's protected, but you can always, if you can put your queen across from your king, good. Same thing with rooks. If you can put your rooks next on, on opposite side of the opponent's king or queen, that's always good too. So the queen will take. And now the knight comes to challenge the queen. And the queen comes to king five. Comes straight up. Again, the knight's going to hit the knight on f6. Check. Now here, black does the exchange, but he didn't exchange it with the knight. He took it with the pawn, and that breaks up the kingside pawns. So that leaves the king a little bit more vulnerable. And now the bishop comes to rook six. I misread the B as an R last time. That's why this bishop was the one that moved. Now he comes to rook six. And the queen is going to go ahead and ignore the threat. He's going to sacrifice the rook, maybe, at least uh, lose the exchange. But white really puts an interesting move here. Queen to f3. Let's dance. So he's going to swap queens. Now, once black becomes the attacker, aha, white says, okay, I need to eliminate attacking pieces. That's a very good defense. So the queen is virtually forced to take the queen. And the rook comes to knight one check, a very interesting move that is really deadly. Notice he's left. 
you can win the exchange, but it's better to pull more pieces in, developing with tempo against the king so that they have to move. Remember, in order of strength of moves, checks, then captures, then threats, and undefended pieces is what I've added. And so this is a wonderful, wonderful way. He sacrificed his queen, and the king goes to rook one, and the bishop comes to knight seven, check. Now, this is sweet, too, because... Yeah, you can win the exchange with the rook. However, you can also force the king back <laughs> on the open file. And now you can take the pawn with a discovered check. And notice how the bishop has shifted locations from h6 over to f6. This is really interesting. Queen... To knight five is all, all he can do. And then the rook takes the queen. Checkmate. Fantastically interesting way to checkmate without worrying about. Now, if you're material-minded like I am so often, if you can refrain from just immediate, yes, you can take a piece. If you can refrain from just immediately taking the piece, you might put be able to manipulate your pieces into a better position and win the game rather than just a piece, and that's always good. So this is fun. This is really interesting how that works. Okay. Let's take a look at another one. How you doing? Is everybody good on time? Hi, Angel. How are you? I am messing too many of these games up. I am in a consternation mood tonight because of all my plumbing issues at home. I'm trying to play these good. I wanted to give you some interesting ideas, so we shall see how this works. Hopefully it works halfway decent. All right, all right. Let's do another one. And... Ah, uh, here's here's another one where white plays a better one. White gets the advantage on this one without question. So we're doing the queen gambit decline. And he declines. And he brings the queen knight. And he brings the king knight. And there's that pin. There's the support of the knight. There's the support of the center pawn king three. Bishop to e7, preparing to castle. Always a good thing. Bring out your other minor pieces. He does get castled. So the castling has successfully taken place for black. And interesting... He's going to bop that rook on c1 right now. White is. And he's going to support the center again. And the queen is going to get activated. And the rook is going to, or the rook pawn is going to come up. And it's at this point that white pulls the trigger on releasing the tension in the center. And the F or the E pawn will retake the D. And he is going to now prepare to castle. The rook is going to develop even better on a better file. Eventually, he's hoping, and he castles. And now he's going to ask the question of the bishop, what's your intention? He has broken the pin with the development of the bishop to get castled. So it's a good idea. Let's see what that bishop's doing, right? He's going to come back. And now 
Black pursues the bishop, but he shouldn't. There's a question mark here. Black would like to remove one of the hostile bishops, a natural desire, but it forms the basis of White's trap. So we're going to see White get the better of Black in what, what seems to be, I mean, I've, I've had this happen in games. I've seen it happen in lots of games where they continue pursuing the bishop, kind of like if he would have came to here, if you would have, have ridiculously pushed the g-pawn to push the bishop even further back, if you can at all help it, keep those pawns from moving in front of your castled king, unless you have the center locked up. But here you don't. So he did come back, so he's pursuing the bishop. Now comes the tactic. And you go, you've got to be kidding. What on earth does that do? And now even worse, the pawn takes the knight. And because of that, you win the queen. Band. Fantastically interesting idea there. So that's kind of fun to uh, to see another quick little trap. That was kind of a quick one. Let me write this down so I don't repeat this one in later sessions. Let's do one more and then we'll call it a night. It is Saturday night. You guys are, well, it is at least for me. You guys are probably wanting to uh, go watch a good movie. And I can't blame you. I do, too, as far as that goes. I'm going to go watch some more uh, chess tactical videos tonight. See, I'm, I'm quite the romantic. I spent the whole day helping my wife and uh, getting things done around the house. And she has, she has told me, you go get off your lazy butt and do some more studying on your chess. And I said, yes, ma'am, I will do so. I've got a very supportive wife. It's awesome, man. Absolutely marvelous knowledge. So here we go. Unamas, Unamas. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got that one. Okay. This is going to be a good one because the ending is a superb. Hey, it looks like the Jolly Troll. Oh, NCAA basketball. Yeah, it's vastly more important than I'll ever be. So, hi, Angel Perez. So anyway, yeah, here we go. Okay, let me do one more, and then we'll go watch the basketball game. That's even better. I will I will have my computer on watching some uh, tactics and practicing some tactics with my left eye, and with my right eye, I'll be watching the basketball. It is March Madness, isn't it? God, dude. Pawn, queen, bishop, four, and we see the decline. And we see the development, and we see the knights coming out properly, wonderful, and speedily, as the bishop again says, Halt and Z, and the other knight says, Never fear, my buddy, I've got you covered. And he's going to support the center. Always good to do. He's going to prepare the castle. Always good to do. He's going to bring out his other minor piece, and he is going to castle. So we've seen this before. Let's see where the difference comes into play here. Rook to bishop one again, and the pawn will support the center. And the bishop getting ready to castle. Good square for the bishop. Nice and flexible move so that he can castle. And now it's Black who releases the tension in the center. The last few previous games, we've seen it's White relieving the tension in the center. But now Black does so. So this is the difference in this game. Let's see how this works out for him. Of course, the bishop will take. Um, and I know this almost goes without saying. I'm going to say it anyway, just in case there really are some real new folks to chess. When you're in this kind of a situation to where nothing else is backing up that pawn, and it does take a pawn and it attacks one of your pieces, going back to save the piece is far too passive. You don't need to do that. 
you do want to retake that pawn, right? Don't go down a pawn for nothing. So, and now knight comes forward to the d5. Good centralization. Nice outpost. What this does is it gives, and, and notice that it opens up the bishops, and so the white is going to exchange the dark squared bishop. The queen will take the dark squared bishop. So if you're going to focus on weak color complex squares, you'll want the dark squares in the black camp, correct? And you go castles. And now he proceeds to take the knight. And because the rook properly came to the bishop file, he's got a partial open file now. He's well developed. And here comes the center push. Here comes the center push. Notice he left the tension. He didn't just immediately take it. Just because either pawns or pieces are in an argument doesn't mean you have to take it immediately. It is better to bring the pawn up here and now let black take you on the D. The queen gets developed nicely. Now, white really has a very strong center, which is the strategic point of the board that you always want to at least control. If you can occupy it safely with pieces, pawns, fantastic. If you can control it, that's all good too. Notice black is not remiss from also attempting to have control. But I think white's got him on this one. However, here comes black, rook king one, nice, easy developing move. And here comes white, pushing forward, giving him more space, which is always good. And now black does a blunder. Oops. He takes the knight, or he takes the pawn with the knight. No, 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 no. You're, you're going to be in trouble. The knight takes the knight. The queen takes the knight, and the queen retakes the queen. No. And that's what makes this so interesting. Just because you can exchange doesn't mean that's always the best thing. So don't be like me sometimes when you, you know, you see... You, you begin to exchange the pawns, and that will lead you to exchanging the pieces, etc. And you exchange all the way down until there's no more uh, tension, and you've exchanged all the pieces off, just tit for tat. After every take, we need to discipline ourselves to look at the board and see if there's a better move than just retaking. And there is. Notice there's a back rank problem with black. This is very important. Also, the cool thing is you get another piece into the attack instead of just the one-on-one -on -one exchange of queens. That's why that's a stronger move. The queen will take the queen. And the rook will take the rook checkmate. Now, in all of our careers, we're all going to get checkmated on the back rank. So this is a good, this is a good lesson. This is a good way to see that even with the juicy queen. I mean, I got a queen. So what? You got checkmated. Because he played heads up chess instead of just simply exchanging, brought the rook. So that's always that's always good to review this stuff. Even grand masters, true story, get back rank checkmated. It does happen. It happens at all levels across the spectrum, mostly for us, but even the higher echelons really do get back rank checkmated. So that's kind of fun stuff. So hey, let's get out of here and go watch the NCAA basketball. Uh, good luck to whoever's playing. I hope one of the teams win. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was kind of corny. All right, you guys. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I will catch up to you soon. I'm going to try to kick out.
several more chess videos this week. I know a few days ago I said my week is really, really busy. I'm not going to get anything done until Saturday morning live. And then I almost post videos every single night. So, you know, I'm trying to get regular on my schedule. I'm just not as good at it as the others are yet, but I am trying to give you good, fun content. And so appreciate all you guys. You guys go watch the game. Have fun. I will catch up to you soon. I will plan on having a next Saturday live session, but I'm also going to do, I could do a surprise live during the week. We'll see what happens. It depends on what transpires. Thanks for everybody showing up. Good to see y'all. And we shall see you all again soon. Have a great night.